So I once read a humorous uh, bumper sticker and it said, I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. And it's meant to make fun of the fact that the reason why I work is because I owe a lot of money and I've got debts to pay and so I've got to make money. But if that's the only reason why we work, how sad is that? And how motivating is that? One of the saddest statistics that I share with uh, staff at times and leaders is that across the nation, the average employee is only 40 to 70% engaged or productive in their work. And too often it feels like a job. It doesn't feel like uh, a purpose. It doesn't feel like a calling. It doesn't feel like a mission. It doesn't feel like, like something that I'm excited to do, but I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. So the question is for leaders, how do you make work more interesting, more exciting, more valuable, more engaging? Well, Patrick Lencioni years ago wrote a book called The Three Signs of of a miserable job. And he outlined in there the three things, the three categories, the three areas that leaders need to be very aware of when they're thinking about their teams and how they can make the work more interesting and engaging. And in brief, this is what he said. He outlined it this way. He said, number one, if people feel anonymous, Others don't know their names. They, the bosses maybe don't seem to care. Maybe the boss comes in in the morning and doesn't even say hello. It's amazing how when people feel like they're just another cog in the wheel, they go to work, they really don't have relationships. The fascinating thing is when you ask people what is the one thing that they value most in their work, it's usually the people they work with. So are we helping to strengthen the connections and the bonds between the people that they work with? To avoid the whole area of anonymity. And bosses, leaders, you have the opportunity. When was the last time that you invited your direct reports in just to sit and ask them how they're doing? Do you know whether they're married, whether they've got relationships? If they are, what their family is like, how many kids they have, do they have pets? How much do you really know about the people that work with you? And if you're unable to answer that, it's really important that you get to know some of those details because it helps your people to feel like they're not just in the shadows and that they matter. It makes a huge difference to their engagement at work. Number two, too often people think that their job is irrelevant. They have no idea of what difference their job makes. Does it really even matter whether they show up today or not? Does the time they put in make a difference in anybody's life? Again, leaders, you've got the opportunity to visit one-on-one -on -one with your team and to help remind them how important their job is. I've often suggested to service managers when a customer comes in and is very thankful for the work that the technician did in solving the issues on their car. I've suggested to the service manager to ask the customer to wait a second and bring the technician forward and have the customer share that information directly with the technician. Not interpreted through the service manager says, oh, by the way, Mrs. Smith was in and she was very pleased. When the technician hears it directly from the customer's lips, it's highly impactful. And it helps the technician to feel like their job matters. You don't want to just be chasing after fix it right first time. You want to help them to feel like their job matters and they will fix it right first time because they will be much more engaged, more focused and be doing meaningful work. And number three, how do people actually measure the work that they're doing. Do they have any idea 
whether they're doing well or not doing well. One of the biggest complaints of employees is say, I have no idea whether I'm doing a good job or not. My boss never says anything to me. I have no metrics to know what I'm doing is making a difference. Again, leaders, this is your responsibility. If you don't have one, two, or even three metrics to, to help your direct reports be able to measure how well they're doing, not to police them and not even to hold them accountable and to push them. This is about just helping them to feel like what they're doing makes a difference and they can measure it on their own. So if you don't want your people to feel miserable, if you want your people to be engaged and be productive above 40 to 70%, you've got the opportunity to help them feel like you care and they make a difference. One of the first signs of that is when, they, when you onboard them as new employees, introduce them around. Another way you can help them to feel like they belong is name badges. Do you have name badges in your store? If not, that's a simple way so that people feel like they are somebody. They have a name badge. And, and not just for customers, but for each other. You'd be amazed how many stores where people don't even know the names of everybody else there, and especially for new hires. This is an opportunity, leaders. Help them to not feel anonymous. Help them to feel relevant that what they do makes a difference and help them to measure it. And you will elevate their level of engagement, the level of productivity, increase the customer experience, and everybody wins. So today, take time to meet with your direct reports and help them to feel like they matter.